This is my illustration. It has a line art, base color, shading, and highlights. Technically, it is a finished character drawing, but it looks bland and boring like my YouTube videos. So today, I'm going to steal or borrow without permission six techniques from six of my favorite artists in the hopes that it will turn this boring piece of garbage into a stunning work of art. The first artist we're going to borrow a technique from is Ogipote. I really like how he adds volume to the hair by overpainting individual hair strands. It is a perfect technique for procrastinating artists who doesn't want to spend a lot of time in their hair line art. And now we have more volume to the hair, and that was easy. Next is Hanabakiri's back hair shadow. Hanabakiri paints the back side of the hair with faded colors. This technique adds more color and depth to the hair. And because I chose a faded purple, it doesn't interfere with the base color of the hair. And by the way guys, my name is Don't Sleep My Canvas. I'm an intermediate artist. I regularly make art style analysis videos. So please subscribe so we can learn together. Thanks. Third is Yoniyama Mai's dramatic lighting. Notice how she paints the hair shadow as if she has redrawn the entire hair over the skin. Look at the shadow on the chest. They were painted in hair shapes and it creates a dramatic effect. This technique adds life to the hair shadow. Dramatic lighting. <laughs> By the way, I'm just making up my own words, but you get what I mean. I sound like a modern art critic. I'm also gonna paint individual hair shadows over the eyes to create that mystique and tantalizing look that captured the hearts of weebs since the beginning of time. I use multiply blending mode for my shadow layer. And I erase the parts that gets hit by the light. I'm not very good at light composition, so I'm only using a 3D doll poster that also has a adjustable light source, and I use that as a reference. I'm also gonna add more shimmering hair strands to coalesce with the number of hair shadows. Fourth is Rizuri's eye reflection. She uses a faded color and opaque brush. She cuts the reflection in half, then on a different layer below, she paints the reflection of the eyelashes using a vibrant color. And to those who don't know what a faded color means, it means the saturated color. If you move the color slider to the left, more white will be mixed with the color and it will be desaturated. I am using a desaturated blue, then cut it in half. Since I don't have a good opaque brush, I'm just gonna use the airbrush, then reduce the opacity of the layer. We need the first reflection to be transparent because below it, we're going to paint the eyelashes reflection. On a glow dodge layer, I'm going to add more glow to the eye. This is just a common eye glow, nothing special. Just to clarify, I'm not copying Rosuri's entire eye, just the reflection. 
Now we're going to paint the second reflection. Number 5. Asks Hair Highlights They were done very simple, but the highlights really pops up. Even if we zoom out, we can still see the highlights. I'm gonna delete this. Then, I'm going to pick a color opposite of the base in the color wheel. Then, I'm gonna make sure the highlights are small to not overdo it, because the color I've chosen is already overpowering. She also paints highlights in the shaded part of the hair, so I did too. Let's zoom out. See, the highlights really pops. Sixth and the final step, Takehito Harada's colored line art. He uses a hard brush for his line art, but he gives his illustration a softer look by having a colored line art. For the darker areas, he chooses a color slightly darker than the base, and for the areas hit by the light, he uses a lighter color than the base. I think he is way ahead of his time since many of his artworks are made in the 90s and the 2000s, back when black line art was the predominant style. I'm gonna pick a darker color than the base. And then use a digital tool to change the color. So here's the comparison. I'm gonna do the same with the skin and the rest. Now here's the complete softer line art look. From afar, it's almost hard to believe I used a hard jeep and brush. So now we're done. Let's make a before and after comparison. I think it improved a bit, but it's up to you guys to judge. So, how about you guys? Which artist would you choose if it was you doing the exercise? Let me know in the comments. I do read all of them. Thanks for watching guys. This is Don't Flip My Canvas, signing off. See ya.